Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take me as I am, summon out what I shall be, set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take me as I am, summon out what I shall be, set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am, summon not what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Someone, not what I shall be. Take me as I am, summon out what I shall be, set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven, in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to God's work in the world. Amen.
Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. Tables are laden with good things. Oh, taste of feast and joy he brings. He'll fill you up with love divine. He'll turn your water into wine. Sing Satisfies, offers the poor his paradise. Now hear all heaven and earth applaud the amazing goodness of the Lord. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Pick your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine, the life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the word of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. 
for the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be a ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me. And get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Do you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord? Do you, I lift up my soul? A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. 
do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just have, as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes 
are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in a way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I shared last time, the lessons continue on a very similar theme each time. It's all about the law. It's all about punishment. It's all about mercy. As you might remember, last time we heard about the great old story from Jonah. I hope some of you sat down and read this little book. It doesn't take you very long. As this story of, of Jonah struggling with being called to uh, pass judgment and going the other way. And then uh, being spit up on land by the whale or the big fish. And uh, going there and proclaiming the God's judgment and people put on sackcloth and ashes. And that included the animals, as we talked last time. And, and then Jonah gets real angry when God ended up being a God of mercy and forgiveness. And the rich landowner, of course, in the gospel text, in which, of course, these people, uh, he hires four different times during the day. And at the end of the day... Everybody that worked even an hour, some all day in the hot sun, all got the same wage and wage that they had been promised to begin with. But they, they thought that was terrible. No mercy. And father, finally, I told you this only funny joke about Father Guido Sarducci in which he's, he talks about when you go to heaven and, and they go through your sins and first they get 200 bucks and then you pay for your sins. And if you didn't do, uh, if you still had money left over when you go through all your sins, each one different one had a different price tag to it. Well, then you got to go to heaven. If you didn't have enough money, you went down. Judgment based on law. Now, another way to look at this is always to understand the fact that uh, that seems fair, really, you know, when, uh, when you uh, are given this life and, and you do certain things, if they're good things, you should be rewarded, and if they're bad things, you'd be punished. That's simple. We had a new look at that, and it's got to be many years ago. I'm not going to tell you how long ago, but I actually was an intern here at Emanuel in Manchester, and our youth group went to a camp somewhere in Connecticut, northwest corner somewhere, with a bunch of other churches, and one day we were told we were going to have an interesting exercise, so to come after dinner into the big fellowship hall, and we were asked to get into three different groups, and in each group we were given, each group was given a set of like, each person in each group were given a set of uh, different colored chips. And each chip had a different value to it. And so therefore, um, you were then having a trading session and you were to trade one chip for one chip. Now, why would you trade a lower price chip for a higher price chip? Well, if you had so many of one, you got extra points. So there seemed to be a motivation to, to but you had to do that anyway. If you couldn't do one chip for one chip, you had to stay right there with that person. And so you went through this first thing and then the, the leader looked and saw that uh, scored the points at some were uh, from one group were, were doing a little better, so they were traded up for the top group, and the other one went down, and et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with the higher group. And this seemed to be a really high group. This was kind of a middle group. This was kind of a lower group. And they went through about three, four times of that. By the end, the lower group, the lower group got so ticked off that they left the fellowship hall. And they were seriously angry. It was a fascinating experience. The bottom line was, and the bottom line around fairness, is 
as we have shared, we all start with different value in the chips we receive. And I guess if we all got the same amount of fair chips, you could work that one, but that's not the way life is. There are certainly, we are reminded during these times of pandemic that um, there are people who are, are barely surviving this time and their chips that they were given from birth don't even come close to what we ourselves have received. And that's why we're in the relationship with a God of mercy and love that calls us both to receive it and also share it. Paul tried to handle this in his uh, letter to the Philippians this morning. Um, he tried to figure out how this community of faith could really live out this love of God, live out this change of judgment, because Jesus in our gospel, of course, is going after the scribes and Pharisees. Um, and really, if you read that, listen to the, again that second paragraph, he was talking about them. They were the people that were saying they were going to go into the vineyard and they don't go. Well, Paul is trying to figure out how to live out in community, of course, as people of love that is shared with the entire world, but it has to be understood as radical. He shares with us in the letter to the Philippians this one sentence that I've often thought about. It goes like this. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Count others better than yourselves. We should call that a very radical concept because we live in a culture, we live in a world, we live in, an, in a history of the world in which that's not the way people look at things. Well, so hopefully we're told, don't be selfish. We tell our children that if we have any. And don't be conceited because uh, that gives a kind of a bad air of things. But to count others better than ourselves? This is the, uh, the environment of faith, to have this sense of ourselves. I had uh, two very loving parents. They're very pious people. Both of them grew up, my dad, in a very small town in Dayton, Iowa. He lived there his entire growing up years, small towns. Dad was the preacher in town. My mother, a little bit bigger community down in southeast Iowa, the Tumwa. But both of them raised me to understand that we are to look at others better than ourselves. And I always tried to figure out what was going on with those people. I, because I wanted to be, you know, me. I wanted to go forward. I struggled with that, but they taught me a deep within and I pray that that has given me, comes from an understanding of faith that allows me to uh, relate to people, no matter what their condition or situation or circumstance. And if I don't, I hear my parents in my head, which hears Paul in their head. Finally, we look to today and we know that uh, we have some issues all around us in our world today. And we hear things like um, the election that is coming up. Um, everybody is gonna vote their own self-interest. Uh, radically different from what we're called to be. But uh, the, again, final result is the reminder that Paul makes, which is, this is what Jesus does. This is what Jesus did. He faced his last time in humility. He uh, gave himself up 
to these same people that had criticized him and attempted to bring him down, and he gave up his life for our sin and for the gift of salvation that is eternal. May we continue this study on, on the struggle of being people of faith in this time and place, but always be thankful for God's mercy and his justice and for him calling us into a world of peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Responding, hear our prayer. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our culture and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, especially Sandy, Myrtle, Leslie, Greta, Ryan, Jennifer, Anna, and Walter. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Protect first responders, essential workers, teachers, and students. Comfort all those who are dealing with the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community, especially the Friendship Service Center and Feed the Need. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect the men and women of our armed forces, especially Kevin, Frank, Ollie, Wesley, Zach, Millen, Keenan, Jonathan, Elijah, Sean, and Chaplain Dominic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now, we pray, the petitions of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. 
Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.